in part two. I hope you guys enjoyed part one. We got some really good feedback, so I'm glad that it is speaking to you and you guys are getting some freedom. There's Katie. Okay. <whistles> All right. As soon as I get Katie on. Hey, girl. Hi. How's your day going? Good. Down for a nap, we're good. <laughs> Yes, I feel yes. <laughs> okay, well, for time's sake, since we have so much, so much to cover, and I don't want to go, I don't want to go like too fast. So I'm just gonna try to go as slow as I can while still getting you all this amazing information. So today we're gonna start with the definition of apology. Um, I hear so many people do not know how to apologize correctly, and that there's more to it than just saying. I'm sorry, or I apologize that there's just more to it than that. And so we're going to talk about that today. So in the Oxford American definition, apology is defined as a statement of regret for having done wrong or hurt someone's feelings. In Webster's New World Dictionary, apology is defined as an inferior substitute, which I kind of thought was an interesting definition, but anyways. And so there's a difference between saying, I'm sorry, and, or I apologize, and forgive me. There's a big difference. And um, I know a lot of people that just, they just didn't know, but there's a big difference. And so we're going to go into why there's a difference and why you should say, forgive me, as, as opposed to, I apologize. And so we do this in our family. This is a good way to practice with your kids. I, I get so, I learn so much just from being a parent, honestly. But from practicing with our kids, when our kids wrong someone, we tell them, you go up and you ask them to forgive you. And we tell them, like, okay, you can't control the other person's response, but you say, will you please forgive me for pushing you on the playground? Whatever it was. But we ask them to ask for forgiveness from that person. And same with our kids when they're doing it with each other. They say, will you please forgive me for, and then we make the other person in our family, we make our kids forgive. So <laughs> they say, yes, I will forgive. And there is, there's that. Okay, so apology expresses regret. It does not forgive. So do you see why there's a difference? Mm -hmm. It makes us sorry and it leaves us guilty. Apology is also defined as an explanation or defense of one's beliefs. And we don't want to defend ourselves, right? We read yesterday that God is our defender, that he is the one that goes forth and defends us. We don't need to defend ourselves. So we need to ask for forgiveness not feel, we, here's what it says. We don't need to feel leaving us sorry or guilty, right? We're not supposed to hold on to that, but we are supposed to ask for forgiveness. So I'm sorry and I apologize are words that recognize the problem only. They do not suggest a solution <coughs> or take action to resolve an offense. Again, this is why we say, please forgive me. Many people use the words, I'm sorry, or I apologize, and in place of forgive me. These words, while acknowledging that there has been a defense, I'm sorry, an offense, deny a solution or action to heal the offense. Sorry makes one guilty. It does not forgive. It does not reconcile. It does not heal. Sorry is also defined as an inferior, poor, and wretched, full of sorrow, pity, or regret. And we are none of those things in Christ Jesus, Amen. right? We are and so you don't need to be sorry. Yes, we don't, we don't want to sin. And we should feel bad about that. And just, oh, God, I messed up. I'm so sorry. But then we need to let it go. We don't need to sit in that. We don't need to stay there, correct? So God's word calls us none of these things. I said that. God's word calls us ministers of reconciliation. Did you know that you are a minister of reconciliation? That is who you are. That is who Christ Jesus said you are. And so you can do this. You can forgive. You can make relationships right with other people. That is who God has called us to be. And so no more, I'm sorry, or I apologize. We are going to say, forgive me, right? Yes. Second Corinthians 5, 19 and 20 says that God was reconciling the word to himself in Christ not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. 
we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Saying I'm sorry or making an apology does not get to the work of forgiveness. Because forgiveness is not about guilt, defense, excuses, pity, or substitutes. Forgiveness is about reconciling and healing. Forgiveness is a must for maintaining relationships with God and with others. So when we ask forgiveness with God, it puts us back in right standing with him, right? It puts us back. We're completely forgiven. That's all he's correct. And same with other people. When we ask for forgiveness, our relationship is right. Regardless of how they respond, regardless of if they choose to forgive you, the second you ask, it's good. When we refuse to forgive, our relationships with God and others are severely hindered. If you can't forgive someone, you can't be in a relationship with them, correct? So you are in turn ending that relationship. Same with God. When you're not asking for forgiveness, when you're not standing in forgiveness with him, that there's a part of that relationship that's not exactly like it's supposed to be. To maintain a relationship with God or others, you have to practice forgiveness. It's, hard, it's not enough to say, I'm sorry, or I apologize. Both of these phrases are grossly inadequate in regards of forgiveness. We would not be wrong in saying that an apology is an inferior substitute for forgiveness. Many of us find ourselves in the position where we choose not to forgive. Jesus came, suffered, and died so that we could be forgiven. God's own son died so that we could be reconciled to God. And we are now a minister of that reconciliation. We are not sorry. We are forgiven. Therefore, we must forgive. Isn't that good? Amen. That's so Katie, what, so what, do you do anything like this in your house? Or how do you apologize when you've hurt someone? Or how would you like someone to apologize to you? Well, and see, and going through this, this is like, this is new for me. Madison's gone through this, but this is kind of new for me. So I'm coming from that side of like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, completely different than, you know, I've started by saying, I'm sorry. And then we work into that forgiveness that I can really see how starting it off this way is going to bring it word based and it's going to go a lot smoother and things like that. But that's, that's true. People say, I'm sorry all the time. And it, like you said, it's grossly misused. My father used to get onto me all the time. Stop apologizing. I would say, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't sorry. It was just something to say. And so we, we, really watered that down and everything. So asking for forgiveness, that's asking for a response. And that's, that's communicating. That's making it a two way. So to me, that's phenomenal. We do have our kids, you know, go apologize to your sister for getting her or whatever. Um, but I really love that example of asking for forgiveness. I think that would, cause sometimes, you know, you get the, I'm sorry. And they don't mean it. <laughs> you, you can say, I'm sorry, but they don't mean it. But asking for that interaction, um, that could definitely change it. So I think that's precious. I love it. I love it too. I love it too. And that's, I love what you, I, I love that point too. Just like when you just say, I'm sorry, and it can just become a habit and it don't mean anything, but asking for forgiveness, it puts, it puts words to your actions. You are acting on what God has asked us to do. That's so, that's so good. I wanted to touch on this too. Um, so I was reading in um, first Corinthians three and Romans eight, they both talk about um, that regret has a similar effect as bitterness. Like if you're, if you're feeling sorry about something, if you regret something as the past, it has the same root as bitterness and unforgiveness um, because they're both tied to the past, right? Bitter, uh, you regret something, you regret something that you did in the past. Um, bitterness and unforgiveness, you're holding on to something that happened in the past, right? And so in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it talks about like if you want to picture like you're sitting down in the lawyer's office and he's giving you the will that God has left you. Like this is what God has left you um, when he died. And so it says his last will and testament is this. You will inherit the world, which is huge, right? Like the world, like, oh my goodness, God, you're giving us the world. We have domain over the world. Crazy. And then he also goes on to say, you inherit life and death. That's a, also a huge thing, right? And one of the last things he leaves us is he says, I leave you all things present and things to come. Which when you think about that, that's crazy. Things to come. Like you're leaving us things that haven't even happened yet. Like that's hard for me to wrap my mind around. But he leaves something out. He doesn't leave to you the past, does he? He leaves to you the present and things to come. But he doesn't leave the past. And do you know why? 
because the past was already bought. It was bought for a price. Jesus died to take away your past. Jesus died to take away your old sins, your old self, your own regrets. Jesus died for all of that stuff. So you do not own the past. You do not have a right to continue to bring up the past, to continue to sit in the past, to have regrets about it, to bring up somebody else's past. It is not yours. It was bought with a price. It is Jesus's. And every time you do that, you are not doing it under the power of Jesus or his blood because he bought it and he took it and it's gone. So we are to live in the present and we are to look forward to things that God has put in our hearts and dreams and speaking those things forward. But we are not to live in the past. And I, I, when I was reading that, I, I just thought it fit so well with what we're talking about because it goes along with this forgiveness and with this, um, how, how we apologize, how we go into that. It matters because once we've done all those things, we've got to let it go because the past does not belong to us. I just thought that was so good. So I'm going to keep going here. That was a little rabbit trail. I'm sorry, but I just thought it was so no, good. No, preach. <laughs> but um, we're going to go into the differences like hurts, wounds, offenses, trespasses, and sins. Because I, I didn't know all the difference. I kind of just lumped them into one big like thing, but they're actually pretty different. So let's go into what is a hurt. So a hurt is to have, you have been caused pain, injury, harm, or damage. Hurt is also to have been offended, to feel or suffer bodily or mental pain or distress, unfavorably affected. You have all felt or experienced hurt. We have all felt pain. We have all been injured. We have all been harmed. We have all been offended and we have all been damaged. A hurt is anything that must be forgiven. A wound is a little bit different. A wound is to be a hurt or to be impaired or to be damaged. A wound is a physical injury, a scar, which has been caused by the past, right? Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Or an injury to one's feelings, sensibilities, or reputation. We have all been wounded, physically, spiritually, or emotionally. We have all had hurt feelings. We have all been dishonored or disrespected. We have all been injured. A wound is anything that must be forgiven. What is an offense? An offense is a sin, crime, or wrongdoing. An offense is a creating of resentment or anger. It is hurt feelings, something that offends or displeases. An offense is injury, harm, hurt, damage, a stumbling block, infraction of the law, or a transgression, a violation, or breaking of a social or moral rule. An offense is a deprivation of your property, rights, or honor. An offense is anything that must be forgiven. You picking up on a pattern here? Yep. What is a trespass? <laughs> a trespass is an unlawful act causing injury to a person, property, or the rights of another, an encroachment or an intrusion. An offense is also a sin, a wrong, a transgress. So lastly, what is a sin? A sin is a transgression of divine law. So see, it's not worldly, it's divine, right? A willful violation of some religious or moral principle, any reprehensible action, serious fault, or offense to offend against principle, standard, etc. So we cannot explain away hurts, wounds, offenses, transgressions, sins. We can't explain them away and we can't defend them. There is no forgiveness in excuses and defenses. When we are hurt, wounded, or offended, forgiveness must be an immediate response. It must become our lifestyle. Amen. So um, no one, not even Christ, was spared from hurt, wounds and offenses. I was, I was watching this sermon the other day and she was talking about how um, God, Jesus was so good to come down and live in, in his humanity. Like for 30 years, he was a human. We only, we only hear about the three years that was his ministry, but for 30, he was a human. In all of his humanness, yes, he was God, but he also felt, he felt everything that he went through. He felt betrayal. When, um, you know, when he was with his best friends and he got betrayed, 
He felt that when he was in the garden and he said, can you guys not stay awake? Can you not stay awake for five minutes and pray for me? He felt that offense, you know, he felt that. He felt that hurt as he was rejected by his people and hung on the cross. He felt that. He felt our humanity. He knows how we feel and it's okay to feel. Christ was hurt. We are hurt. Christ was wounded. We are wounded. Christ was offended. We are forgiven. Forget, sorry, offended. But Christ forgave. So we must forgive. Mm -hmm. If we have anything, any hurt, any wound, any offense against anyone, forgive them and let it go. Pardon the anyone in our lives for the anything that they caused. Pardon them just as Christ pardoned us. And so as, as we go into wrap it up, I want to talk about different types of offenses and wounds. Um, I know that every single one of us has been hurt, wounded, offended, sinned against. We've all, we've all had these, right? But there are different types, and they all must be forgiven, but sometimes we need to understand what they are so that we can walk in forgiveness of them. So here are the different types of offenses and hurts and wounds. One of them is called real. It's the real offense, hurt, or wound. And a real offense is one that actually happened, directed towards you. For example, a child is told he is worthless by a daycare worker. This is a real offense directed for the child. So someone comes in and says, um, you know, I just, I don't like what you're wearing today. You just could, you just need to get it together. That's directed at you. It hurts you. It's towards you. It's a real offense that you picked up, right? Still have to be forgiven, but it's a real offense. So the second type is imagined. So it's perceiving acts of others' intended offenses. Receiving disappointments from unmet expectations. So like, hey, I thought, I thought that um, my friend would call on my birthday, and she didn't, and I'm offended. So we're judging her heart. We're like, we don't know what happened that day, but we're offended because we thought that she had a standard that she didn't meet, right? An imagined offense is when you perceive another's action as an offense intended for you or when you become disappointed because of unmet expectations. So the third one is assumed, picking up offenses directed towards another person. So let's go back to the child in the daycare worker example. Imagine that the daycare worker tells the child that he is worthless. The child's mother walks in and hears this comment and she assumes the offense of her child's hurt. Every mom has done this, right? Mm -hmm. We're like, you my baby and I'm offended with you you know we take on those offenses of our children or our husband if you know somebody was rude to your husband we take that on and that's not ours to take we have to put that down and forgive that as well okay so there's real imagined and then assumed all of them have to be forgiven there's no difference in forgiving all of them so does forgiveness mean simply forgetting no it doesn't in most cases, people realize that they cannot forget an offense no matter how hard they try. Now we have a choice. We can choose to forgive everyone for everything in our life or choose to continue to live in unforgiveness. Forgetting may be a result of forgiveness. Now God, he tells us he does forget. With humans, it's harder. It is really hard for us to forget. I do want to tell you, though, that God can take that out of your heart and mind. I have prayed for specific things that I just can't get over. I said, God, just take that. Like, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to see that person in that way. And there have been times that I've met that person later and they brought something up and I literally cannot remember. Like, I do not remember what happened because God took it. So there are circumstances where he can take that. And then there's some wounds that we just have to choose to forgive and he changes our heart towards them. We don't have to operate out of hurt, but we may never forget them. Okay. So um, when people continue to bring up old wounds or offenses to continually use past hurts and wounds against others, they have truly forgiven that person. Hebrews 10, 17 says, their sins and lawless deeds, I will remember no more. So just what I said, God forgives it, uh, forgets it. We are too not to continue to bring it back up and bring it back up to that person. We need to let it go. This means that when we go to God and confess our sins and ask for his forgiveness, that he will not use them against us. So we must not use them against other people. If you're with someone and you say, remember that time that you did this and this and this, or the first time they hurt your feelings, you bring something back up, you are not being like Christ to them. And we have got to stop doing that. 
I'm going to close with this verse. And then Katie, can you read that I comment? Did. I did. Yes. Okay. Let me close with this verse. And then you want to address that? Yeah. Okay. So Psalm 103, 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Do you know how far that is? That's how far he took your sins away. So if he can, so if a perfect sinless God can forgive our sins, we can forgive anyone else in our lives. So today let's work on how we ask for forgiveness. Let's watch our words and say, will you please forgive me? And go deeper than just an apology. Work on that with your children. Work on that. And if someone comes to you and says, will you please forgive me? By all means, please, please forgive them. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. I can't read that. Okay. So Carmen's just asking, she was asking for um, advice. She's had somebody that's constantly caused um, stress, anxiety, pain. This person hurts every time that she talks to him and she feels like, from what I can tell, she's trying to forgive and she feels like a failure because she's not fully forgiving the person because it just brings up past hurts every time. And first of all, I want to say, um, you know, there was questions about this yesterday after we finished the video. You're not a failure. Um, you're still sucking air. So we still have time to get this right. And then things take time. You know, um, this person, that first offense didn't get you to this point. It was the second, third, fourth, fifth coupled. So you probably have a lot of offenses built up against this person. So my suggestion is, you know, God knows all things. He knows my heart. He knows that other person's heart. So what you my suggestion is just, you know, you've got the heart right now that you want to forgive them. You need to take it to the Lord in prayer. You need to ask what the root of this is because everything has a root. So your root may be you are looking for um, confirmation from this person. You are you may be looking to this person to give you something that they don't even possess. Um, you may be looking to this person to confirm you or to make you feel, you know, I you and you also may be looking at this person and you may be feeling rejection because they are not giving them what you desire. So it's assumed, or I can't remember exactly. I'll have to go back and look, but you need to um, take it to the Lord, ask him what the root of this is, and then just be in communion with your heavenly father over this and just start praying for this person. And I know that sounds crazy, but you don't pray your own prayers for this person. You pray, Father God, I just pray that you bless this person. I pray that you let me see this person's heart. That if this person is somebody that has to be in your life and you really don't have a choice, um, you really need to be fervent in your prayer for that and prayer for that person. And ask, um, you know, intercede for them. And ask them to send people along their path so that they can point, be pointed back to the word in this area. Um, but just ask him to heal your heart because like Madison's witnessed and I've witnessed, I mean, it can actually happen and we don't have to have that other person's, um, okay or blessing or whatever to forgive them. You can forgive them without them forgiving you. So you forgive them. You just move on and, um, you're not a failure and it's going to be those things like every day it might come up. There's these certain things that I deal with every day coming into my mind and, and attacking me and you have to just deal with it on, on its onset. So forgive her for every offense as she's doing it. Like as immediately as it happens, forgive her. Yeah. And I, I touched on this yesterday and actually tomorrow we're going into the relationships part. So what it looks like to walk this out in relationships. And if it's not a person that you have to be with, mm -hmm. sometimes that does mean ending relationships. Now, not forgiveness. We are still forgiving them. We are still always kind when we run into those people. Um, we are still Jesus's light all the time. We do not ever talk bad about them. However, it may mean ending that relationship. I don't, I, I don't know if it was somebody that was like in your family or close to you, or if it was just like somebody that you don't have to come in contact with all the time. But we are going to address that more Friday, going into the, what it looks like with those relationships when, um, when you can't always, she's stuck in my life for good. Stuck in my life for good. Okay, well, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Then so, Katie's advice is, was dead on. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, I know that it's hard to see it this way and it, and it is hard to see it this way. I know when you're in the middle of it, it is hard to see it this way, but you can be a light. If you are constantly kind every time, if you always respond with grace 
again, if you've made mistakes, we all have. So no, don't feel any of that. But if, I mean, what a testimony to be the light every time that person brings you hurt or heartache or you are literally being Jesus. So although it probably doesn't feel like a blessing, I'm going to speak over you that it is a blessing, that you get to be a blessing in her life, even though yes, it's hurting you. So I'm sorry about that. But I'm going to let Katie close us in prayer, and um, we'll see you guys Friday at 1, and we will talk more about the relationship things, because since you guys are having a bunch of questions about that, we're not going to leave yet. We're going to answer no. them. So. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, we just come boldly before your throne of grace, favor, and mercy. Father God, I thank you for this group of people that is coming together, that it has a desire to um, love, forgive, and walk out this unconditional love on this on this earth that you've called us to do, Father God. I just thank you that we are going to be um, imitators of you, God. I thank you that we are going to seek you in every situation, in every relationship, Father God. I just pray that we are going to bring you into the center of our marriages, if we're not already there, and if in the center of our um, parenting, and in the center of our friendships, Father God, in and outside of the church. I just thank you right now that you are just people together, getting them together by your word and our love for you, Father God. And I just thank you that some of these situations that may seem impossible, Father God, you are the God that makes the impossible possible. I thank you for everything, every good gift that you've given us, that you've given us the gift of self-control and things like this, Father, so that we can use these in these situations to be a light in this dark world. I thank you that we are just going to meditate on your word. We're not going to meditate on the wrongdoings of others. We are going to be willing to forgive. We're going to be able to cut that reel of tape that's playing in our head of the wrongs that they have done because it is illegal for us to bring those up because we do not own the past, like Madison said. So I just thank you, Father God, that you are helping us to cut that reel, to pull those things out of our thought process and focus on the good and on your word. And we just love you. We give you praise, glory, and honor for your word and for your people and for relationships, Father. In Jesus, matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 I wanted to say one more thing while Katie is praying. I just put something on my heart real quick. Um, first of all, I, I know personally that I've literally been in your shoes. I'm still in your shoes, Carmen, of having to, to, to go to be in the presence of people who hurt you over and over. And I just want to say that God never said this was going to be easy. He just keeps putting it on my heart. Like, this, this freedom stuff, getting freedom from God, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's dying daily to yourself. Yes. Every, your flesh is screaming like, I want to react to that. I want to say something to that. I want to right her wrongs. It's saying, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to die to my flesh. I'm going to do what God asks us to do. And it is not easy. So I just, I wanted to just say that, that we're not, we're not pretending like this is easy. We're not no. pretending like this, just, you know. That it's just like, oh, yeah, I've got this down, and it's just so easy to forgive every time somebody hurts me. No. There are tears. There are real moments that are in my prayer closet. Like, God, let me put this down. Battles that happen every day. So I just want to say that before you think that, like, we are acting like this is something. No, this is not. So but we have to do it. But we don't have a choice. So that's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. And then well, we it's love good, you too, though. The thing, the blessings that come from, like, one little step of obedience the blessings yeah. just like he can just pour it out on you. So that, that step of obedience, I just believe that you're going to start seeing some of that manifested goodness in your life because of your willingness to walk out his word against or in this situation. Yes, yes, yes. Love it. Okay. Love it. Right. Love y'all. See you all Friday at one. Bye. Bye.